about how I'm manipulating my 3D files in Carvco. It's how I'm pulling these files directly off of Etsy to place them into Carvco and then create G code to send out to the one fitting. So basically all we're doing, running into Etsy here to pick up a couple of 3D files. Carvco does have the ability to turn these files into 3D files, but you have to have probably more of an advanced skill to manipulate imagery into actual 3D files. I'm not quite there yet with Carvco. So what I've been doing is pulling 3D files off of Etsy that others have already created. This is gonna be as easy as typing in 3D CNC file. I mean, really what you're looking for is you're looking for STL if you have Carvco, and I'm pretty sure a lot of the other programs are like that too. Um, so here, uh, I mean, right off the bat, that world map that I carved a couple of months ago that shows up, you can pick any one of these out that you want. I personally would not pay more than $5 for a 3D file. If you're going to start paying more than $5 for 3D files, then you might want to go ahead and take a look at the tutorials to start creating these yourselves. You'll save a good amount of money, especially if you really get into this. I went ahead earlier and I conducted that search or 3D files and I ran across this ship on top of a world map. I'm a huge fan of world maps. This one's 550, 559. So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and violate my rule of not paying more than $5 for a 3D file. But I really like this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it. And then we're gonna go ahead and throw it in Carveco and see what we can do with it prior to getting a carve going on a piece of wood. So basically what's going to happen here is you're going to buy it, whichever one it is that you want. It's going to come in the form of a download. So I have that file now in my account over the map that I purchased is from Vertex Zone. It looks pretty good. Let's see what we can do with it. All right. So I have this downloaded again from the secret link that is not mine to share uh, that I shall not share. But here are the download files. So I have a 6619, the world map for 3D printing. And then I have a 6619, the world map, which is noted as a 3D object. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and close out of Etsy because I don't need that anymore. I have the file I want. I'm going to go ahead and pull up Carveco. What I want, I have a 12 by, um, I have a 12 by 24 piece of walnut outside that I would like to put this on. So I'm going to go ahead and put my dimensions in there. This is going to give you a new model. And then when I'm in Carveco, what you want to do is go up to Relief. Then you're going to click on import, import 3D model. Go into where you had downloaded those files or saved them. Go over to the model that you just downloaded from Etsy. World map. Here's what it looks like to me. So not really looking to 3D print this. Again, I need the STL. So for my 3D object, it's going to be 6619, the world map. These might look a little bit different depending on who you bought your file from. But I went ahead and imported that 3D model and what's going to come up is you're going to see again, I hope I hope your computer has some processing power because it starts out extremely large. You're going to see your original project down here, the 12 by 24, and then you can see the scale of the model that was imported. So that's pretty important to note because you're going to end up readjusting the size here. So when Pace 3D model shows up, you want to you want to verify a couple of things. Number one, you want to make sure your Z height is not taller than the actual piece of wood that you have. So the walnut that I'm talking about that I want this carved on is three quarters of an inch. My Z size right now is at 18 inches. So obviously I don't have that much walnut to carve into. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and take that down to three quarter inch. I don't want, want Z-linked, but I want X and Y-linked. So I'm gonna uncheck Z and go ahead and adjust that to my depth of 0 0.75. Apply that. You can see it really flattened out the model there. So Carveco does this so we can see what kind of detail that three quarter inch is going to get me. So let's go ahead and shrink down our X and our Y to a reasonable dimension to see what this actually might look like. So my X size, again, I only have 24 inches to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and throw 24 in there just to see what that looks like. My Y size automatically is going to adjust to 16 because that's the scale of the model. I'm going to apply that and you can see that the model came way out to the right. The next thing you want to do is hit center and that's going to center the model directly into the middle of your workpiece. So let's zoom in and see what that looks like. Okay, great. So now that we have the X and the Y within reason of the actual model, you see that the detail came back that we want. And depending on how you want the edges 
of this to look. You can adjust the Z to be less than your material, but not more than your material because you're going to lose detail. And if it is more than the material, then you're going to end up carving into your wasteboard, which is not anything that anybody wants. You can see that my scale size on the X and the Y actually needs to be shrunk down a little bit more because my model is outside the perimeter of my actual workpiece. So I need to scale this down more in terms of Y because that is less of a measurement than the X in this case. So my maximum Y, and remember if you're accounting for uh, room to clamp the workpiece and all that, I'm gonna put my Y size at 11. So my X size automatically adjusted to 16 to scale. Let's apply that. And now you can see that that's fitting very nicely in my workpiece. Again, you wanna make sure it's center before you paste it down. And like right off the bat, um, I think this looks really good. So even though I did pay a little bit more than $5, this saved me a lot of time and work. I'm not gonna have to do the work to create this 3D file. Pretty much just come in here and paste it down. So all you have to do now is run a 3D relief toolpath. Click on paste. All right, great. So now our model is pasted. So now that we have that pasted, we're gonna go ahead and create a 3D relief toolpath. Up here, click on create machine relief toolpath. All right. So whole relief, the entire relief machined. If you want to have this like a cutout or something like that, you can put selected vectors and then you can draw a actual vector around. I tend to do this uh, just to save wood. You can see on the left and the right that there's gonna be some extra walnut there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to draw a vector around this. So that way I can just cut out the piece that I want um, from a profile cutout pass and then that'll save me some wood on the left and the right there. So I'm going to create a rectangle and it's going to be all my empty space here. So starting from three and three quarter inches, moving out all the way to 20 and one quarter inch. That is my open space there. So I'm gonna create that square vector. You can see I have the pink outline there to indicate that I have a vector. Now that I have that for the machine relief toolpath, I can go ahead and click on selected vectors. And what that's going to do is that that's going to keep the 3D, that's going to keep your bit inside that vector so that it's not carving the left and the right. Okay, so now for finishing options. Um, first, I want to talk about roughing options because that's the, the toolpath that I always run first. So generally what I'll do is I'll do a quarter inch Jenny compression on the, uh, the roughing options. Obviously, that's up to you. This works really well for me. So let's go ahead and take that for uh, just just for the sake of the video. Uh, for finishing, um, I really, for 3D detail work pieces, I like to go really small. So it's either gonna be a 16th inch skinny Jenny or the bit that I have from Amana, which is uh, also really good. So let's look at that. That is my 46, 470 CNC 2D and 3D carving bit. And this bit is extremely detailed. You can see that my step over and step down are automatically extremely small values. Um, this is so I can get as much detail as I can crammed into that image. I'm just going to leave that. Normally, I would turn this up a little bit for the sake of time, but for the sake of the video, I'm going to go ahead and leave that so that we can get the most detail that we can out of this. So generally going to add ramping. Yes, safe Z up to you. I like to leave mine at about a uh, little, little more than three quarter of an inch over the material just to make sure nothing gets jammed up. And then make sure you set your material thickness. My walnut is three quarter inch. There we go. As soon as I adjusted the material thickness, you saw the color change. Um, that's just to indicate that the machine knows what kind of thickness we're looking at. So this is going to generate two different tool paths, a roughing pass and also a finishing pass. Uh, the roughing pass will ultimately save you time um, when it comes to the finishing pass and the finishing pass, the bit will actually take a lot less damage during the carve as long as you're doing a roughing pass. Um, so in my mind, one, you're saving time by doing the roughing pass and two, you're saving wear and tear on your 3D bit, which to me is very valuable. Let's calculate the relief tool path. I'm going to just name it relief tool path. Calculate now. Depending on how detailed your model is, this could run for a couple of minutes or it could run for a couple of seconds. Also, this is going to depend on your computing power. The faster the processor and graphics card, the faster this is going to compute. Okay, so it has the roughing pass calculated now. 
there we go there's the finishing pass so you can see that th this is going to be so detailed on the finishing pass that you can barely see where the 3d bit is making its lines so if i zoom all the way in here you can see that these are individual lines here that the bit is making individual passes on so this is really what takes the most time when you're doing these 3d carvings but this is going to work very well the last thing i'm going to do before i send this file out to the machine is I'm going to go ahead and run the simulation control bar. This is going to let me know that what I've calculated so far is actually going to work. This, so this is kind of predictive of the future, me getting an idea of where the bit's going to go so that I can place the clamps in the proper position. So go ahead and pull that up, click on simulate, and this is going to simulate your entire carve here. I'm going to close out the tool path bits there. All right, so hit play, and then you can just fast forward to see what your bit's going to be doing here. During the roughing pass, this is the exact pattern that your machine is going to take using the G-code that this is going to generate. That's the roughing pass. Um, hit play again, and now you're going to simulate your finishing pass. Again, this could take some time here. The more detailed it gets, the, more, the longer it's taking to generate these individual lines. But you can see that the toolpath we've created so far is coming out very well. So there you have it. Uh, you can see that the simulation is now complete. Make sure it's what you want before you actually generate the G-code. I like this. So really what I would do now, once the roughing and finishing passes are complete, I would make a profile cutout pass all the way around the image and then sand off the edges that came with that. So that way I have a really nice 3D carving there. So that's going to look super nice. I would estimate this carve taking uh, seven to eight hours to complete. If you look at the tool paths here, you have the quarter inch pass, then you have the 3D. 16th inch pass. If you look at how these are set up for the 3D pass, your step over, you've got it at 0 0.00315. Your step down, you have it at, I have it at 0 0.01535. I would probably triple these. So this step down would actually be a 0 0.03. Step over, if you, if you got the time, maybe just leave it alone. Um, if you want to speed it up a little bit, go ahead and turn those up. Okay, so that's it. The last thing to do is really just import the carve toolpaths into your machine. So with CarveCo, you're going to do that by hitting the save toolpaths right here. You're going to save the toolpaths. For Onefinity users, you're going to go into that file and upload that. And the Onefinity already knows what to do with it. So basically what you saw in the simulation is going to be what the Onefinity is going to do. I believe other CNC machines are similar, but I cannot confirm that because I only have a Onefinity and that's how I know it works for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see me actually perform this carve and actually make this carve on the piece of walnut that I was talking about, go ahead and like and subscribe the video. Um, drop a comment. Let me know what you think. I'm always interested to hear what you guys have to say or think about my work. Thanks for watching. Tune in later uh, next week for this carve.